1123 on your Thursday, and it is time for Florida Weekly. We are joined by Eric Raditz. How's it going, Eric? Well, how are you all? Good. Great so to We were you talking here. about how it's always good to see you because it means the weekend is near. Yes, That's right. <laughs> my face means fun to come. That's right. Uh, we're starting off, though, with, with a somber note. Um, you know, Saturday's the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terror attacks, and, uh, you know, you may know President Bush was in Florida actually reading to elementary school students in Sarasota when he learned about the terror attacks. And you guys are kind of explaining that story. Exactly. So we all remember where we were on September 11th. This week we take a look. One of our journalists was actually covering the Sarasota's Emma Booker Elementary School President Bush visit when he was given that news. You might remember that iconic moment. It was whispered to him. We see it here in our front cover. Uh, what was it like? What was it like that day for her? She gives an in-depth, first-hand recollection as we all pause to remember September 11th together. I'm not sure where you guys were, but yeah, we were still relatively young. I was in the third grade at the time, and it, it is something that sticks with you. Although looking back, I don't think I truly understood what was happening. I just remember the next day going back to school, sitting in a circle with my teacher and holding hands, and she was just saying, "You are safe," because I grew up in the Boston area, not too far from New York. So it's definitely a day that sticks with you, even as a young child. Yeah, I was in fourth grade. My teacher, Mrs. Bill Meyer, came in, just told us that there had been a plane crash, and uh, we were going home for the day. So at the time, the kids in, in the school were happy. We had no idea what it actually was and for me what I remember most about it it was the first time that I actually watched the news again I was in fourth grade wow. and just watched the news for for two or three straight days just watching the horrific events and now yeah. you're an anchor on the news can you imagine well you yeah. Life Life has a funny way of, of um, working out. I uh, was you make me feel old because I was at the news press where when I heard the news it was a full news day. We put out a, an edition there, but uh, something interesting uh, on a lot of the different pieces that we're seeing on documentaries. But this one in Florida Weekly is a very unique piece. Absolutely, one to definitely pick up if you can. Well, there's some other topics you guys are going to be touching upon in this uh, weekly edition as well. You're always talking about business, and this one's about how to keep your talent. Yes, so if you happen to have employees right now that happen to fit that rare combination of skill set needed for operations within your organization, now is the time to make sure you hold on to them. Uh, within the professional field, some might say it is a, it's hard to hire, so it is a good time for tips, and we give you plenty on how to hold on to your talent. All right, if you like to uh, work hard and also play hard, there's maybe more craft beer breweries in Southwest Florida than people think. I just said this last week. I didn't think there was a lot of craft breweries here. You tipped us off to it, but we were already <laughs> thinking about it. So how many do you think we actually had? Or five, ten? Are we talking about Southwest Florida or just Fort Myers? Let's go Southwest Florida from Punta Gorda down to Naples. Time. Uh, I would say I would eight. guess six. Eight, try 18. Oh, okay. wow. And uh, we, we happen to take a look at a bunch of them. Not only do we look at the different craft breweries, but we have this group that does a Florida Ale Trail. There's Florida Ale Trails around the state, one specific to Southwest Florida. You can actually download a passport, see all the different great local craft breweries, and then you can take the passport to them, get free, get good deals, add points where you get some free stuff. Uh, so if you're the person who loves great uh, local craft breweries and beers, this is an issue that you must pick up, keep, take, read, and uh, try a bunch of these local craft breweries, but drink responsibly, of course. Of course. I love the atmosphere of craft breweries. Not a big craft beer fan, though. Okay, <laughs> but like the atmosphere. Exactly. Well, we're talking about things to do, like we mentioned. Friday is tomorrow. It's <laughs> the weekend. We always love the weekend here. Uh, what's going on? You will know if you pick up Florida Weekly. We always have a comprehensive calendar of things to do in and around town. Uh, we also have some top picks. I'll mention this week in town is uh, John Lovitz of SNL fame. Uh, we have The Color Purple at Lab, Footloose the Musical, A Night on Broadway at Broadway Palm Live, Jazz at Barrel Room, a lot of September 11th remembrances, green markets, book launches, trivial nights, much more, plenty to do. Uh, pick us up on stands online on your device right here on NBC2. A lot of great ideas right there. Footloose, the musical, specifically has my attention. Love Footloose. Got to cut loose. Yeah. All right. Footloose. Well, Eric, thank you very much for coming on. We'll see you next Always week. Always good thank to you. see you. Always to see you, too.